One of the biggest pitfalls for new web designers is maintaining consistent design, especially when using a page builder like Elementor. We talked a lot about this in my last video and shared a couple of tips to help, but in this video, I'm gonna dive in a little deeper and take a look at one of the most commonly used elements in web design today, and that is the trusty button. I'm gonna share how I keep my buttons consistent throughout my Elementor website builds without the need to copy and paste styles and without needing to add custom classes. And then we'll finish up with a little CSS spice to help bring your buttons to life. Hey, I'm Ryan from Hello Hudson. Thank you so much for joining me. If this is your first time, welcome. This channel is all about sharing tools and tips to help you build better and smarter websites. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you're notified of new videos. Even with the smallest of projects, getting in the habit of using smart web development practices not only helps keep your designs consistent, but prevent you from wasting time backtracking when you wanna make a global change. Elementor helps a little bit with global colors and fonts, but when it comes to our buttons, they're a little lacking. We have some basic control over the default settings, but this doesn't really help us when our designs require some variation. What we want is to have a set of buttons that are consistent, but have variations for different actions and can be used on light and dark backgrounds. This is where Style Kits for Elementor comes to the rescue. Once installed, it instantly adds additional global global features that pick up the slack. Now, the way this works is that we take advantage of our button sizes. By default, this option simply changes the size of our buttons. But now, with style kits, we have full global control over these. To show you how all this works, let's jump into an example. So we're gonna start with a real basic style guide where we're gonna lay out the buttons that we're gonna style. And I've created here a light section and a dark section just so we can show the different styles and the different variations we're gonna work with. So I'm gonna start by dragging in our buttons and I'm just gonna start with our extra small. I'm gonna duplicate it through, change this. And we're just gonna add all our different sizes so that we can then use style kits to style them. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put our large and extra large over here in the dark section because they're the buttons we're gonna utilize on our dark backgrounds. Okay, so let's jump into our site settings and then down here to buttons under theme style. So this is where we're gonna add our font style. And as you can see, that applies to all of them there. And because some of the buttons we're gonna use are gonna have an outline, I actually like to add an outline to all of my buttons just so that they're the same heights. So we're just gonna add a one pixel border to this. Now this is where we're gonna control the overall size of our buttons. So I'm gonna start with adding a 30 pixel border radius and then set our overall padding. I'm gonna add a 20 pixels top and bottom and then a 40 pixels left and right. I might need to bump our border radius up to 40 just so that we get rid of that little edge there. That's much nicer. There we go. Okay, so now that we have our basic styles for our buttons, we're gonna just update this and then jump in over to our style kits and button sizes. From here, we can style each and every size based on our preference. So with our extra small, I'm gonna make this our feature button. So this is gonna have our blue background and also it's gonna have a blue border. So we just need to make sure we set that. So once we've set that, we can come down here to our hover style. Now with these hover styles, we don't necessarily want to change too much here because we're gonna use some custom CSS to apply some nice animations to here. But what I do know is that our animation is going to fill the background with our light color. So we don't actually need to set that. But what we do need to set here is our text color to change. So on hover, we're going to change our text color to the blue. But for what I'm wanting, I want to leave this background as a blue for now. Okay, let's move on and jump through these other ones. The next one is our small size. And this is actually our default button. So I'm going to do this one as our simple outline button. We start with adding our text color to be our primary. Background color is actually gonna be transparent, which we need to add as a global. Let's just go and add this in here. Great. And we're gonna change our border color to be primary as well. 
Now on hover with this one, we actually want to set our text color to be our light. Same with our border color. But we're going to leave that background transparent for now so that we can add our effect later. So I'm just going to fly through these other ones. And if you're not wanting to add any custom CSS to your buttons, you can simply set these up exactly the way you want them now without having to follow the next steps. But because I'm trying to add something special here, I'm going to make sure these are ready to go. And remember, be as creative as you like with these. You can make them look however you want to fit your style and brand. Okay, so I've got these all ready to go. I'm going to update this and I'm going to preview it on the front end. So again, if you're happy with how your buttons look now and you don't want to actually add any additional CSS to style these any further, then great. You've now got five consistent buttons that can be used throughout your design. But from here, I'm going to go into CSS Hero and add my custom CSS. Now, what I want to do to begin with is I want to actually grab some of these global colors that we've got just so that I'm keeping consistent with everything. So I'm just going to use my inspector. Come down here and find our global colors. The ones we're going to need for this are going to be our primary, this accent color, and then our light gray. So I'm just going to grab these. And then I'm going to add them as variables in CSS. So let's start with our dark variable. And then we're going to do light. And then we've got our blue. Remembering that we can use variables because we're using less CSS, which CSS Hero will render out to be CSS for our website. Okay, next we're going to add a few more variables that we're going to use in our less CSS here. So the first one is going to be our transition variable. You might have seen me use this one before. But rather than simply using a transition such as E, I'm going to use something with a little bit more finesse to it. So the final thing I'm going to add here before we get started is a mix-in for our transition properties. It's a very simple one but it's simply just going to cover all of our bases with the different browsers. This way, rather than having to specify all of these different properties every time, we can simply use our mix-in transition properties. Okay, so we're ready to go. So as mentioned before, we're not going to use any custom classes on our buttons because I'm wanting to apply these settings to every button that we use on our website. If you're wanting to only use this additional CSS on certain cases. You might add a specific class to your button that can be applied sporadically, but for this case, I'm gonna apply it to all of our Elemental buttons. So we're gonna start by setting up some custom CSS here for our Elemental button. Once we've set that up, we can use the after pseudo selector to add our motives to our button. So now we can begin to see our little dot elements appearing on some of them. Obviously, it's not appearing on these white buttons because we're using our light color, but we'll change that on the individual one shortly. So the final step we want to do before we get to our hover property is just to slightly transform our text. So we can target within here still our elemental button text and add a transform with a translate X. I'm going to move it across 10 pixels. Okay, so now this is our default state for our buttons. So now we can apply our global hover property and here we're just going to adjust a few things like our text position and how our dot transitions to fill our button. So once we've got our text done, we can add our fill effect. So this is simply just going to be set to fill the entire space. So now we can come and see how our animation is working. So it appears we've got a bit of a delay on the text and to fix this, we simply want our text to change color instantly. So to do this, we're going to come back up here to our elemental button text and rather than transitioning everything, we're just going to make this work on our transform property. So change this to transform and now we can see our text is transitioning instantly while our background is actually what is animating. So from here we can come in and begin to add our specific styling for our different sizes. So let's just quickly see the ones we need to make adjustments to. So obviously our small button we need to change our dots color to be our dark and same with our extra large one so let's add some custom style for our small button so that one's looking beautiful and because we're adding the exact same thing for our extra large one we can simply add it in here and there we go our five buttons are working beautifully let's just save this and, and refresh it on the front end and test them out looking good 
So now just to show how easy it is to utilize these buttons throughout your Elemental designs, let's just go back in and edit this page with Elemental. And I'm just gonna drop in a new button, which is gonna default to our small size. So it's gonna match this one. And if I were to change the size, it's gonna match each of those different styles as we go through. Obviously the large and extra large ones being to use on our dark styles. So we can come in here and change our text. Pick a style that's gonna work for us. And our button is ready to go. If this has been helpful, please leave a comment below and give this video a thumbs up. I'd love to hear how it's helped. Thanks for joining me and until next time, bye for now.